They say, well, I've never been tested. Maybe not. None of us have been tested like Paul and dear Lord, let it never be. But if we were and we have the Spirit of God in us, we'll come through as the Lord wants us to come through. You know, I think that, that just increases as you're tested real faith. You know? so, so let's go back to 1 Thessalonians chapter 3. Verses 5 and 6. First Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. So Paul says, For this cause, when I could no longer forbear, I sent to know your faith, lest by some means the tempter have tempted you, and our labor be in vain. But now, when Timotheus came from you unto us, and brought us good tidings of your faith and charity, and that ye have good remembrance of us always, desiring greatly to see us, as we also to see you. So he wanted to know about their faith. He says, I, I couldn't stand it anymore. I had to know. And the news was good. What Timothy basically told him is, their faith was growing, and their love was showing. <laughs> so... So when I read this, I thought, imagine if I had to leave here for, for a year, you know. I know most of you would be fine. You're good, mature Christians. You have the, the Spirit of God in you. And uh, if there was any needs, the more mature would help the less. But I'd still be anxious to know, you know, what's going on there? You know, what's going on with those guys? And that was Paul's case with all the churches, especially towards the end. When he was in prison, he knew his death was coming, and he knew he was never going to see them again. The work was done. And so, he wrote to them. He wrote to all of them. And aren't we blessed Amen. that he did? Because you know, that's what we have. All right, verses 7 and 8. Therefore, brethren, we were comforted over you in all our affliction and distress by your faith. For now we live if ye stand fast in the Lord. So he's saying that he was comforted by their faith. And so really, if you think about it, how much he suffered, that news, yet that that faith was growing in them, was a deep comfort or a salve over his wounds. How neat, you know, it's, it's working. And their standing fast was like life itself for him. That was what his purpose was. So he was having fruit. And that's really, when everything is gone, that's all we got left. You want to see what happens at the Bema Seat of Christ when, he, when things are burned away and things are left? What's going to be left is the fruit that was produced through us, through our making ourselves available to the Lord. So, in other words, the vaccination took. The disease was dying. That's the old man. And they were growing spiritually. That's the new man. And he saw that happening. And he, if he never went again, that was good enough. You know, that was that was great. So, verses nine and ten. For what thanks can we render to God again for you, for all the joy wherewith we joy for your sakes before our God, night and day, praying exceedingly that we might see your face and might perfect that which is lacking in your faith. So, he wants to see them, but he also wants to perfect that which is lacking in their faith. And we all wish we could finish the job that we started, but God always has somebody warming up, you know. It's somebody he lets plant a seed, somebody else he lets water. I mean, he's got the big plan. Uh, his work is eternal. He gives us our little parts, but it's His work, you know. So whatever He gives us, we just ought to be thrilled that He gave us that part. Amen. If you ever get to have somebody come up and ask you, like I had the privilege of one young lady doing and saying, well now, how do I get saved? It's like if that's all that happened in your life, is that you were able to lead somebody to eternal life. I mean, people try to make you get all excited about noise on a stage or somebody touching somebody and they fall over or weird sounds yeah. when God has given us the privilege of being able to be used to take a person who is eternally dead 
and bring them to eternal life with God. I mean, there's nothing. But that's, a, that's a raising up Amen. from the dead that's eternal. And he gives us that privilege. You know? and there's nothing better. That's you know? true. And nothing as good as that. All right, verse 11. Now God himself and our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ direct our way unto you. Again, Paul's wish has always been he wants to see them again. He'd like to see them. But he still leaves the increase to God. He knows whether he sees them or not, it, it's God that's going to take care of it. So we'll finish up with verses 12 and 13. And the Lord make you to increase and abound in love one toward another and toward all men, even as we do toward you. In, to the end, he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God, even our Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. So, the way I see it, he's saying, the Lord make you to increase and abound. Paul's not going to be able to make them to increase and abound, but the Lord. And the Lord will establish your hearts unblameable. We certainly can't have a part of establishing hearts unblameable. But then that curious thing at the end there, it's really interesting because Turner had a question last week about, well, if when we die, we go up right immediately to be in the presence of the Lord, but then we hear that on that certain day when he comes for us, that the dead in Christ shall rise first, well, how that, how's that happen if they've already been risen up there with him? Well, of course, what he's coming for is the redemption of the body not the spirit and the soul for the people that have died in Christ. And I, I'm not going to follow this. We'll look into it a little next week. But you might see there in verse 13, he says, and let me stop before I tell you what he says here. When he's coming to Jerusalem to set up his kingdom, he's coming with the angels. But here it says, he may establish your hearts. He's talking to us, to, to, to the body of Christ unblameable in holiness before God, even our Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all His saints. So could it be that when He comes to meet us in the air, all those saints that have been with Him since, since, him, since the day they died get to come too? Because how else can they meet their bodies in the air and then we come up and meet them also? Can't guarantee that's what that means, but it sure sounds pretty solid to me. But when does that happen? Well, we're going to cover that week after next because I'm not going to be here this Sunday, but Frank's going to be here and he's going to lead the lesson. And one more time, I want to remind you about the pamphlets on the fire department.